Good morning, everybody. Welcome to C-Trek Live. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We are coming to you live from Moat Marine Laboratory in Sarasota, Florida. My name is Casey, and I'll be your host today. Now, we do have one live site connected with us for OMG Manatees today, and we're really excited to have the folks in Urb Urbana, Illinois, join us. So, hello, everybody. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. So, what we're here to do, to do today is talk a little bit about manatees. Now, I have a very special guest with me this morning. Her name is Kat Burns and she works right here at Moat Marine Laboratory. Now, Moat Marine Laboratory, just to give everybody out there an idea of where we're located, we are in Sarasota, Florida. We're on the west coast of Florida, about 60 miles south of Tampa. Now, Moat Marine Laboratory was founded back in 1955 by a woman named Dr. Eugenie Clark, and Jeannie Clark founded our laboratory on shark research. So we are very well known for our shark research. In fact, our logo has a shark on it, and Jeannie Clark, our founder, is known as the Shark Lady. But we're known for a lot of other things, too, because we are primarily a research laboratory. So like I said, I have a special guest with me this morning. This is Kat Berner, and I'm going to let Kat go ahead and introduce herself. So Kat, tell everybody out there who you are and what you do here. Hi, guys. My name is Hello. Kat Berner. I work here at Moat Marine Lab in Sarasota, Florida, and I am the supervisor of Manatee Research. Here at Moat, I am responsible for the daily care and maintenance of our two resident manatees, Hugh and Buffett. All right, so we're going to see a lot of manatees today. We're, of course, going to see a lot of Hugh and Buffett. We call them the boys here at Moat Marine Laboratory. Now, um, let's just give everybody out there a baseline. What exactly is a manatee? Ah, good question. Now, manatees are marine mammals, and they're actually aquatic herbivores or vegetarians. Ooh. So as a marine mammal, you'll see that manatees are very large, um, and they spend their entire lives living in aquatic environments. Manatees are very warm-blooded animals. They're covered in hair, um, and they have to live in warm environments all throughout the year. That's interesting. So, okay. Most marine mammals, like if we think of dolphins or whales or even seals, we think of blubber. They can keep their body heat, they can keep warm because they have a really thick layer of blubber. And I know a lot of animals, even their blubber layers, the thickness of it will change throughout the seasons in order to keep their internal body temperature warm. So manatees are a little bit different though, right? A lot of people think that manatees are really big fat animals and they must be full of all this blubber, but can you tell everybody a little bit about manatees and why they're a little bit different than other marine mammals? Yes, they're very, very unique marine mammals and manatees are extremely large, but they're not fat. It's actually a very common misconception. Manatees have very thick, large, dense bones and they're just kind of wide animals. So that's one of the reasons for why they, everybody thinks that they're very fat or large, but they don't have a lot of blubber. They've got very thick skin and a very thin, thin layer of blubber. So they don't have a lot of protection to help keep them warm. And that's one of the main reasons why manatees live in shallow, warm environments like estuaries. They will travel throughout our big oceans. They'll stay close to the coastline, and then they'll head into both freshwater and saltwater estuaries all throughout the year. Now, since manatees have that pretty thin layer of blubber, they do need warm water to survive. So here in the United States, we find them mostly in the southeastern United States, like here in Florida, because our weather and our water stays pretty warm. Now, manatees cannot survive in water below 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's important to note because we see a lot of manatees like kind of aggregating or grouping up together, trying to stay warm. We'll even find them in warm water areas like freshwater springs, other warm water refuges like near power plants where there's warm water outflows from that power plant. And so that is primarily why you see manatees in the southeastern United States, simply because they need warm weather and water to survive and the best time of year to see them is here in the winter so just like a lot of folks from Illinois or North Dakota or New York like to come visit Florida in the winter time because our weather is so nice and warm those manatees are the exact same so winter is the best time of year to see them so if anybody travels to Florida this winter be sure to keep your eyes peeled for our state marine mammal, the manatee. So let's talk a little bit about Hugh and Buffett in particular. There are two manatees that live here at Moat Marine Laboratory, and it's important to note that in their tank they have a green sea turtle, Harry, that lives with them too. So why don't you go ahead and introduce the boys and Harry as well. All right, so our two boys are named Hugh and Buffett. 
Buffett is 27 years old, and he weighs 1,855 pounds. Woo! He is our big boy. Now, his older half-brother, Hugh, is 30 years old, and he's a little bit smaller. He weighs 1,199 pounds, but the average manatee does weigh somewhere between about 12 and 1,500 pounds, so Hugh's right about the average size. Now, you guys will see that we do have a resident um, green sea turtle. His name is Harry. He is a green sea turtle, which means that he also eats vegetation. So we've got an exhibit full of vegetarians here at Moat Marine Lab. <laughs> so this is important to note. We wanted to talk about um, what these guys eat. Now, here in the United States, a few weeks ago, we just celebrated a pretty big eating holiday, oh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. So a lot of people can relate to that out there watching. So we definitely stuffed ourselves to the gills. December and January are full of winter holidays where a lot of people <laughs> join friends and family for lots of food and gathering. So do you want to tell everybody out there a little bit about what these guys eat? It is strange because they are huge marine mammals, but they only eat vegetation. They only are herbivores or vegetarians. So if you want to talk a little bit about their nutrition and what they do like to eat. Sure. So manatees that live in the wild would eat both freshwater and saltwater, sea grasses, sea gra or plants, and vegetation. But at Moat, since Hugh and Buffett live in our care, we feed them 72 heads of romaine lettuce and 24 bunches of green kale. And they get that every single day. That's their set diet. And that is the most uh, appropriate amount of nutrition and the best caloric amount that we can feed them on a daily basis. So they get lots and lots of food. Their feed kind of spend, they spend a good chunk of their afternoon grazing. We'll toss in about 24 heads of romaine and a few bunches of kale um, at one point in the afternoon. And then we'll continue to toss it in as the day goes on and they'll just graze away. The nickname for manatee is actually the sea cow because they are just like land cows. They can graze for about 80% of their day, and manatees do actually eat about 8 to 10% of their body weight. So breaking that down for folks out there listening and tuning in, you had told me a figure the other day about wild manatees and how much they can eat in one day. Can you share that with everybody? Yes. So wild manatees who eat those different types of saltwater and freshwater seagrasses and plants could actually eat an entire football field of seagrass in one single day. That is a whole lot of vegetation. Oh, yeah. Now, of course, manatees have to eat so much because the food that they're eating, all of that vegetation, the seagrasses, um, and here at Moat when they're eating the romaine lettuce and kale, that type of food doesn't have very much energy in it or calories. So since they're not meat eaters, they're not carnivores, they need to make up, they need to keep a lot of energy going, they need to intake a lot of calories, and so that is why we see them grazing almost all day long. And you brought up something really cool. Manatee's nickname is the sea cow. Now, it's, very, it's an appropriate nickname because they are grazing all day, just like land cow do, but it's a little misleading because a manatee's closest living relative on land is who? Their closest living relative on land is the elephant and the hyrax. So if you guys take a look at manatees, you'll see that they're very gray. They've got gray skin. Their skin is very, very rough. They also have tiny, tiny little hairs that cover their entire body. And if you look closely at their flippers, you'll see they even have fingernails. So they resemble not a, sea, not a cow, but they resemble more of an elephant. Yep, and then they have that flexible snout, of course, that they use to grab onto their food. And you can definitely see the similarities when we talk about an elephant's trunk. And like Kat said, they even have fingernails or toenails on their front flippers. They've got rough gray skin. They've got hairs all over their body just like an elephant. So a lot of people are really shocked when they hear that. And then if we talk about other marine mammals, if we look at the cow, their closest living marine mammal relative is actually the dolphin. So a little trivia out there. Now, I know that you guys do a lot of work with Hugh and Buffett. Now, they eat more than just their romaine lettuce and their kale every day. I know you guys give them some treats like some apples. Yep. So do you want to talk a little bit about what else you feed them and why you feed them a little bit of extra food and what you're doing when you use that extra Definitely. Food? So at Mo, when since we do have a very special permit that allows for us to house these two animals at our facility, that permit even allows for us to be able to actually train them. 
Now, when you talk about training, it's very similar to the training techniques that you guys would use at home with any of your pets or little brothers and sisters. Um, the training technique is called positive reinforcement. And all that means is when you ask for a behavior and the behavior is done correctly, you tell the animal, good job, and then you give them a handful of food. Now, with Hugh and Buffett, special treats or training food for them, since they are our herbivores or vegetarians are actually apples, beets, and carrots, which is really cool. They even get another special treat, which is called a monkey biscuit. And all these fruits and vegetables actually have a high level of sugar in them. So even though everybody talks about how fruits and veg vegetables aren't like chocolate or candy, they still have a lot of sugar, and our animals find them very, very reinforcing. So we have a little monkey biscuit here, and I believe we can find these at local pet stores, right? Yeah. Lots of uh, different rodents like to eat them yeah. as a treat, definitely. Now, if you all look inside of this monkey biscuit, we've got a little pill in there. So what is that? Well, with our animals, since they're not eating the food, sea grasses that would be in the wild, if they were grazing on those, they would actually maybe pick up some tiny, tiny pieces of um, other types of nutrition, maybe some dirt, maybe some small crustaceans. They might even maybe eat tiny, tiny little fish just by accident. But all that is just extra nutrition. So in order to supplement that, what we give our animals is just a preventative are multivitamins, the <laughs> same type of multivitamins that we would actually get from the grocery store. Um, so because of their size, their daily intake is three multivitamins, and these guys are really clever. Um, they, don't, they won't necessarily just want to take the vitamin on its own because not all vitamins have the best taste. So we'd actually drill a little hole and stick it inside that little monkey biscuit. We offer it up to them. If they eat it, great. If they don't, we'll just try again tomorrow. Once again, it's not any type of medication. It's just a preventative. All right, so we know that manatees eat a whole lot all day long. We know that you do have some training sessions with those, them. They do usually occur in the morning. Sometimes you do those in the afternoon. And we're going to talk a little bit about what exactly we're trying to do when we train the manatees and what you guys are trying to find out. But I also want to talk about what they do on their downtime. So how do you keep a manatee entertained, exercised? Great question. So we do have training sessions that are run all throughout the day. Most of our training sessions focus on their health care, or they even, we even have the opportunity to train them for some research behaviors. But when the manatees aren't being trained, they're allowed to free swim in all areas of their exhibit. They can be in public view. They can even go into the back area of their exhibit, be in full sunlight or partial sunlight. But the best thing that we can do for our animals is to change their daily routine. So we have different types of manatee toys or manatee enrichment that we offer our animals every single day. And all these different toys are different, and they're actually on a rotating schedule so that no day they're getting the exact same toy or no day their day is never the exact same. So enrichment is really, really important because it provides different types of stimulus for all of our animals. And you'll see most facilities that house animals or marine animals will have different types of toys for them to play with and interact with on a daily basis. Now you guys have learned manatees love to eat food, so we have different types of uh, toys that we offer. We offer type 1 and type 2 enrichment, where type 1 provides a different type of food that we feed them, and type 2 can be something other than food. It can provide a different type of stimulus, like a tactile or an auditory, something that um, their senses will be able to detect and pick up. And because manatees are so large and so strong, we have to make sure that all the toys are appropriate and safe for each of our animals. They are very good at breaking stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so a fancy word for toys that we use here at Moat Marine Laboratory is enviro environmental enrichment device, or EED for short. Now, as Kat said, these EEDs provide a lot of really good things for the manatees. Of course, right now they're getting a little snack with this EED, but they stimulate the mind as well as the stomach. So that's really important. So. People wonder how we exercise these animals, how we maybe exercise their minds, and this is exactly how facilities do it all over the world, not just at here at Moat Marine Laboratory. All right, so we have at, or told you all a lot about manatee so far. You've learned a little bit about Hugh and Buffett. So I want to open it up to our interactive site in Illinois to see if they have any questions out there for us that we could possibly answer. So, Illinois. Let's open up your mic and answer some of your questions. We do have some questions. And first, thanks for having us. Uh, our first question. 
My student is coming now. <laughs> how do they sleep if only? How do they sleep if they can only stay under the water for 15 minutes? Excellent question. So how do manatees sleep if they can stay underwater for only 15 minutes? Now remember, manatees are mammals, so they need to come up to the surface of the water to breathe air using their lungs, just like we do. Now manatees can stay underwater for about 15 to 20 minutes at a time, but I'm going to let Kat answer the sleeping question, because that is a really good one. Yes, great question. You guys are right. They can only hold their breath for about 15 to 20 minutes, and on average, if a manatee is swimming or playing, being active, they will breathe about once every minute to two minutes. Now, the thing with sleeping is because they are conscious breathers, manatees can only sleep for about small periods of time all throughout the day. So if they hold their breath for about 15 to 20 minutes, they'll then only rest for about 15 to 20 minutes all throughout the day. Now, believe it or not, manatees can fall asleep spontaneously. They can be in the middle of a training session, in the middle of eating a head of romaine, and just boom, fall asleep. They'll sleep for a few minutes, and they'll wake right back up, and then they'll go back to doing whatever they were doing before they fell asleep. So it makes training very, very interesting when they can fall asleep at any point in time. So. Wow, I didn't know that. That is pretty amazing. So you guys can think of manatees kind of taking little cat naps throughout the day. So they do sleep very differently than we humans do. All right, that was a great question to start question. with. So, Illinois, do we have another question? Can they be mean in attack? So, manatees, that's a great question. Can manatees be mean and can they attack? Manatees are extremely gentle or docile animals. So, they're very, very passive. Um, their kind of daily routine involves eating for about 80% of their day sleeping for about 15% of their day, and then being active for about 5% of their day. So these guys actually have no true predators in the wild, and they are very, very gentle. Now, if you are ever around a manatee or do see them in the wild, it's important to watch them from a safe distance because, once again, they've got those really, really thick, dense bones, and they're extremely strong. Manatees are like a giant bicep. So they couldn't, wouldn't necessarily attack you or hurt you on purpose, but if you get in close interaction with them, they could definitely squish you. And one other thing that's important to remember, if you do ever see manatees in the wild, always be careful where you are, of course. You don't want to hurt you don't want to be hurt by those manatees and you also don't want to hurt the manatees and it's really important to remember that since manatees are marine mammals they're protected by something called the Marine Mammal Protection Act and they are an endangered species so they are protected by the Endangered Species Act as well so if you are caught riding a manatee, petting a manatee things like that it is against the law and folks recently in the past mm -hmm. few years have been fined, have even gone to jail yep. when people have caught them almost everybody has a camera in their pocket now with smartphones and all the technology that we carry around and so it's pretty easy to get caught so keep that in mind it is against the law to interact with wild manatees yes. all right let's take another question from Illinois and it's important to remember while we're waiting on that question that folks out there if you're watching the live stream you can go ahead and open up the chat feature and you can chat us a question that cat could answer this morning so Illinois do we have another question out there we do um, how do their eyelids work? How do their eyelids work? Oh, this is a great question. <laughs> good one. So manatees don't have very good vision. Um, manatees are actually a vision that's twice as bad as a legally blind human. And we actually learned that from doing some of our research studies with Hugh and Buffett here at Moat. Um, we do know that manatees can see like blues and greens and browns, but they can't see very distinct features and they don't have the full color spectrum. So if you guys are looking close at some of the feed, you can see that they've got tiny, tiny little eyes that are offset on the side of their head. And they actually spend majority of their day with their eyes closed. So they do have the ability to squeeze and close their eye. And then they have a protective eyelid inside, which keeps their eyes protected from all different kinds of things that are in ocean environments. Oh, interesting. Now, manatees don't have true eyelids like we do. So they can't blink like yeah. we do. But rather, if um, maybe... Was that Hugh or Buffett? 
Buffett, I think. We're getting right a little there. look here. Here's Buffett. <laughs> um, if we get another close-up shot, if he turns around to the camera, if you do get a chance to see their eyes, it's important to remember they do not have eyelids like we do, so they cannot blink, like I said, but rather their eyes are surrounded by a ring of muscles, and they can squeeze those muscles shut. That's a pretty good shot. Thank mm -hmm. you, Buffett. <laughs> All right, Illinois, do we have another question out there? What is the average lifespan of a manatee? Another great question. What is the average lifespan of a manatee? Great question. Now, right now, we are, I know that manatees can actually live to be into their 50s and 60s, but unfortunately, wild manatees aren't actually living to that full lifespan. We're seeing that manatees nowadays are only living to be into their teens or making it more into their 20s. Wow. So, but we do have some manatees that live in human care, and we know that they do have the ability to live to be at least 60 years old. So you said that manatees aren't living very long. What are some threats? You said that they don't have any natural predators. Can you share with folks out there what some threats might be to manatees? Yes, so no natural predators in the wild, but what we see mostly with manatees is that their injuries or their mortality rates are being affected by human interactions. So that comes from boats, um, boat strikes, we also see a lot of animals that are getting wrapped up in different types of, are having different types of entanglements from interactions with fishing gear, plastic bags, um, all different types of debris. So it's really, really important that we help keep our oceans clean. And if we're out, um, out on a boat or out in the water, it's really important that we keep our eyes out for manatees because their number one cause of mortality comes from human interactions. Absolutely. So. Be safe out there when you're boating. Keep your eyes peeled because those manatees are definitely sharing the same waterways that you enjoy. And folks out there, even if you're near the ocean, even if you're not, if you're up there in Illinois, do your part as a good citizen of the earth and reduce, reuse, and recycle. Cut down on the pollution we create. You can use reusable bags um, or totes when you go to the grocery store. Don't get those plastic bags. Or if you do use plastic bags, reuse them for something else at home. Or you can even bring them back to the grocery store for recycling as well. So it's really important to remember that. And even if you're enjoying fishing on rivers and lakes, no matter where you are, be a responsible fisherman and take care of your gear and dispose of your fishing line, your fishing nets properly. Definitely. All right. So I think we have time for one more question from Illinois. So why don't we go ahead and take that question from you. What, what different colors do they come in? Do they come in different colors? Oh, are manatees different colors? That's a great question. <laughs> or, or, or that is a great question. Manatees do have gray skin, but if you guys are looking at some of the feed, you can see, especially on Q, he's got some different markings and stuff on his skin. Their skin is normally gray, but you'll see some of the manatees, especially the manatees in the wild, have a thin layer of algae that covers their skin, which could make them look a little bit more brown or green in color. But their skin typically is a dark to light shade of gray. Good question. Excellent. That's great. So again, if you think of their relatives, the elephants, most elephants do have that gray skin, and so that is the same with those manatees. But like Kat said, out in the wild, sometimes you will see some algae growth, so they could have a green tint, even a red or a brown tint on them. Very interesting. All right. Well, it looks like, I believe, do we have one question in our chat? All right. Well, let's go back to Illinois one last time. I think... Oh, how many whiskers do they have? That was the question in our chat. That is a great question because their flexible snouts and their chins are covered in these really tough whiskers called vibrissae. Now, they're very different than your cat's or dog whiskers at home. They're not as flexible as those whiskers. They're really tough, right? Kind of like fingernails on their face. Yes, it's exactly like having fingernails on your face. They have very thick whiskers called vibrissae, which are located right on their prehensile lip. And those whiskers are really, really important to detecting anything that's in their environments. And they'll use those whiskers to investigate objects that are near or around them. Now, they I don't actually know that they have a set number of whiskers, but they have three different types of vibrissae. They've got really thick vibrissae that are located on the inside of their, uh, their prehensile lip which when they're going to grab an object will curl around that object and almost act like a tooth to kind of rip that object, especially if it's a string of seagrass or anything like that. They can pull that out of the ground. And then as the whiskers extend back towards their face, you'll see that they start to get a little bit thinner. And then they have what's called post-facial hair or tiny, fine whiskers that cover their entire body. 
and we know that they've got about an average of 3,000 tiny hairs that cover all over their skin. All right, excellent. So we have another question coming in from the chat, and the question is, why is it okay, or is it okay, to have a turtle in their aquarium or their exhibit with them? Do you want to explain a little bit about Harry before we sign off today? Sure. So Harry was actually a boat strike victim who came into our hospital here at Moat Marine Lab. Um, he was found floating at the Banana River, came in for treatment in our hospital, and then was actually put into the manatee exhibit prior to being released. Now, um, you will see different species of animals that coexist in different environments, and it all depends if those animals fit well together in an existing environment. Now, Harry was put into the exhibit to see if he, how he would interact in a larger um, water environment and to see if he would have any reaction to being around a different type of species. Well, when he went into the exhibit, Hugh and Buffett went into the very back and were hiding from him, and Harry had the entire 70,000 ga 70, gallons to swim around. So um, he went in there in about 2007, and it was decided that he should maybe spend the rest of his life living at our facility because he showed no true flight response, and he also showed difficulty navigating around his environment. So his boat strike actually caused some neurological damage as well as damage to the optic nerves causing him to lose some of his vision. So they all get along great. He, like I said, is a green sea turtle, and so he's a vegetarian just like Hugh and Buffett. So Harry actually gets to eat whatever lettuce and kale he can get away from <laughs> Hugh and Buffett. So right now, Harry is pushing 250 pounds. Woo! He's a big turtle. He is a very big turtle. All right. Well, it looks like we are about out of time. So I want to thank everybody out there joining us live on our stream. I especially want to thank our interactive site in Illinois. It was a pleasure speaking with you all today. And I really hope everybody's enjoyed our chat this morning because we had a great time with OMG Manatees. Stay tuned to C-Track's Google page and to Moat Marine Laboratory at moat.org for any updates on our interactive programs, other educational programs, and all of the fantastic research that happens right here at Moat Marine Laboratory. Don't forget, if you're ever in Southwest Florida, in Sarasota, come and visit us at Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium. So from Kat, myself, Casey, and everybody here at Moat Marine Laboratory, thank you for joining us, and happy holidays, everyone. We hope to see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Yeah, yeah, number 12, man.